about basics, shall we? Most of the world is still quarantined at the moment, which means people everywhere are taking up new hobbies like sewing and gardening and baking banana bread. So you might be sitting at home right now with a sewing machine wondering, where the heck do I start? And I've been there. So let's break this down. There are three things that you need to sew. Number one, the fabric, the material that you're gonna be working with. Number two, the device with which you're sewing. This might be a sewing machine, this might be your hands. But for this video, we're focusing on the sewing machine. And number three, the pattern. Whether you buy a pattern or you draw your own pattern, you need some sort of pattern for reference. As a self-taught sewer, sewist, don't know the noun for that one. 90% of how I learned to sew was on the internet. So I'm gonna link below every YouTube video, every resource that I found helpful when learning to sew. Go check those out, like, comment, subscribe while you're down there. But I'm also just gonna walk you through it today. So let's just get started. That was a transition. Starting with fabric. It's very important that you have a basic understanding of fabric before you start sewing. And this includes two things, fiber content and construction. So fiber content. This is the fibers that your fabric is made up of. Think of it as the ingredients that your cake is made up of. The fibers in your fabric will affect how the fabric will drape and hang off your body. If it's stretchy, if it's breathable, if it absorbs your body's moisture. This includes natural and man-made. So natural, my favorite one, comes from plants and animals. This includes cotton. Cotton comes from the cotton ball of a cotton plant. Linen comes from the flax plant. Hemp fabric comes from a hemp plant. Bamboo fabric comes from bamboo. And then from animals, we have silk. Silk comes from insect larva. That sounds gross, it really does. Wool comes from animal fur. If you've ever heard of tencel or lyocell, lyocell is technically in the rayon family. Lyocell comes from the pulp of hardwood trees, and then it's processed in chemicals, which makes it only semi-synthetic, but it's still considered a sustainable, eco-friendly fabric. Fiber. Fiber fabric. <laughs> Fiber. Moving on to man-made. These are manufactured fibers. They're synthetic. They're made in factories. This includes polyester, nylon, spandex, acrylic, rayon. If you look on your little ingredients, <laughs> ingredients? If you look on your tag on your shirt right now, look down right now. I'm gonna go ahead and bet that like 40% of your tags are gonna say rayon. Somewhere on it. Rayon is also considered a semi-synthetic fiber. It comes from the cellulose of wood pulp or cotton, but then it's processed in a bunch of chemicals that are known to be harmful to the planet and to factory workers. Things like sodium hydroxide, carbon disulfide, and sulfuric acid. Didn't memorize that, I just looked it up. But yeah, rayon is inexpensive, it's versatile, shrinks when you put it in the dryer, and it's some people's nightmare. All right. Moving on. The other part of fabric that's very important to know is construction. This is how those fibers are turned into the fabric that you'll be sewing with. And this includes wovens or knits. And it's very important to know which one it is because it's a very different sewing experience depending on which one it is. Starting with wovens. Woven fabric is typically woven on a loom. So it's tightly woven, it doesn't stretch much, and it frays. So the lengthwise grain, or the straight grain, runs lengthwise down the fabric and it's called the warp. Usually you'll cut the pattern so the straight grain is running down your body. The cross grain runs horizontally across the fabric and it's called the weft. It runs parallel to the selvage edges, which are the finished edges of the fabric. And the last thing is the bias. So the bias runs diagonally across the fabric, and this is the stretchiest part of the fabric. So if you've ever heard of bias tape, basically it's just strips of fabric cut diagonally, and then it's used to bind something curvy, like a neckline. You'll use a universal size needle for most lightweight wovens. You'll need a sharper needle for thinner wovens, and you'll need a thicker needle for thicker fabrics like denim. Moving on to knitted. So knitted fabric, 
fabric is basically just a bunch of loops looped together. So it's bouncy, it's stretchy, it doesn't fray, and it also doesn't wrinkle. You'll use a ballpoint needle if you're sewing with a heavier, looser sweater knit, and you'll need a stretch needle if you're sewing with a really stretchy fabric like this one. All right, and the very last thing I'll say about fabric is fabric from fabric stores is very expensive. So if you're new to sewing, you're probably thinking, wow, I could buy a dress for cheaper than I could make a dress. And you're probably right. Instead, I look at thrift stores, Facebook Marketplace. I just bought three bags of fabric from an old lady's basement on Facebook Marketplace and it was like 10 bucks. Also Amazon or eBay, you just, you gotta look for it. But your girl loves a good discount, so. Moving on to the sewing machine. I'm gonna show you just a few basic sewing machine settings and functions that you need to know as a beginner sewer. So list. Okay, I have a Singer Talent, which is my favorite sewing machine I've ever had. I bought this little baby half off at Joann Fabrics, which is a fabric store. They also have an online store. Check their website, subscribe to their emails. They run deals all the time. This isn't sponsored, but I mean, it could be. <laughs> Joanne, if you're watching this, please sponsor me. Here are the sewing machine basics. This style is for the different stitches. The stitch length determines the length of your stitches. A good one to keep it at is at two and a half. The width determines the width of your stitches. So if you're using a straight stitch, you should keep it at zero. The tension really depends on the fabric that you're working with. If the seams are really tight or rippling or kind of like pulling, you might wanna loosen it a little. If the seams are loopy and really loose, you might wanna tighten it. So lefty loosey, righty tighty, see which one works. The spinny wheel on the side drops your needle up and down. This is where you'll load your bobbin with thread and then you drop the bobbin in down here. This little contraption is where you thread your machine. This switch is for a reverse stitch. The pedal makes it go. I got a nice plastic one here. I also have a secret compartment I can put things. What's in here today? Just some tools. As a beginner, it's really important for you to know three basic stitches. The straight stitch, the reverse stitch, and a zigzag stitch. I'm gonna show you real quick how to do those. I'm gonna put my little fabric squares right sides together. Side note, most things are sewn right sides together. This is called the right side, and this is the wrong side. Pretty side, boring side. But some fabric looks the same on the right and the wrong side. So for this example, I'm gonna put a little check mark on the right side. So I'm putting my fabric right sides together and I'm sewing this at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. 5 eighths of an inch is commonly used on store-bought patterns, but you can sew with whatever seam allowance your little heart desires. But make sure it's the same on the pattern. I'm gonna turn my dial to a straight stitch. I'm gonna sew a few forward stitches and then press down on the reverse stitch button, back stitch just a few seams, and then I'll keep sewing forward all the way down. And then I'll end doing another back stitch. If you were hand sewing, a back stitch is the equivalent of tying a little knot. It just locks your seam in, so reverse. And here's what it looks like. Beautiful. A zigzag stitch is used for stretchy fabric or finishing a raw edge. I'm gonna put my fabric right sides together again. And for my width, I'm gonna move it to a three. We're getting crazy with it. And I'm starting and ending with a back stitch. And there we go. When it comes to seams, as a beginner, the most important one to know is just a plain seam. But if you notice, a plain seam leaves the inside of your garment with these raw edges, which can fray. And if you don't want that to happen and you want the inside of your garment to look professional and neat, then I'm gonna show you two very simple seams that you can use a French seam and a felled seam. So for our French seam, we're gonna put our pieces wrong sides together. Crazy, I know, it's gonna feel unnatural. And then we're gonna sew a very narrow seam allowance of 3 eighths of an inch. And then we're gonna take our scissors and trim the seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch. And then we're gonna flip it right sides together and sew a second row of stitching at one fourth of an inch. So three eighths plus one fourth is five eighths. So we're keeping our seam allowance, guys. So the outside of your garment should look normal, but the inside now has the seam allowance in case it won't fray and it just looks beautiful. Now for the felled seam. This is a really strong seam and it's most often used on denim. So I'm gonna put my wrong sides together again and we're gonna sew a normal five eighths of an 
an inch seam allowance. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and cut one of the seam allowances down short. And then if you look real closely, I'm taking the longer seam allowance, I'm folding it in, and then I'm folding it in again. And then we're just gonna make a seam right next to the other seam. So then the outside will look something like this, and the inside also has the seam allowance encased. So those are the basic seams. You might also come across a basting stitch, an edge stitch, a stay stitch, a gathering stitch, a curved seam. It sounds overwhelming, but I promise they're all easy. I'm gonna also link below some simple tutorials for all of those. Before we move on to the last segment of this video, here are some tools that you might need as a beginner sewer. Comment down below if I should be saying sewer or sewist because I just I can't figure it out. All right, you will need a vast array of scissors, some sharp fabric scissors for cutting fabric, regular scissors for cutting paper, little baby scissors, also these little snipper things, a vast array of measuring devices, including a straight ruler. This one has a handle on it, very convenient. A curvy ruler. This is for if you're drafting patterns, it has a little armhole curve and a hip curve. A floppy measuring tape. Taylor's chalk. They're erasable. They're really great. Get yourself a cute pin cushion. It really boosts the morale while you're sewing. Elastic. I like to have different widths for different projects. This is my absolute favorite tool in sewing existence and it was like a dollar. A seam ripper. I hear people say all the time, I'm afraid of my sewing machine, I'm gonna mess up. Let me just tell you, I mess up every single time I sew. All you gotta do is rip those little seams out and start over. What you should be afraid of are these because you can never take back something that you cut wrong. So seam rippers are our friend. Scissors, not our friend. Interfacing. This comes in the glue-on kind or the sew-on kind. Basically, interfacing is just used to add sturdiness to things like a collar or a neckline. And the last thing, an iron. This is my favorite iron. It's a steam iron. It's not on, don't worry. <laughs> do I have a forest of plants behind me? Yes, I do. I really do. And the very last thing I have to briefly talk about are patterns. When I first learned how to sew, I went out and bought a simplicity pattern, which is just a, oh, here's one right here. It was just a very basic dress and I made it and that boosted my confidence enough to be like, okay, I can sew, I'm capable of sewing. And then I started taking store-bought patterns and altered them a little. If you saw my romper video that I made, I took a store-bought pattern and I altered it and made it fun. And lately I've been getting more into just making patterns from scratch. Pattern drafting is a completely different ball game. It requires a lot of math which is not my strong suit, but I'm gonna link below some of my favorite people who are really good at explaining it when I am not. And that's all I have to say about that. I hope you learned something from this video. Like always, comment down below and let me know if there's anything you wanna learn, anything you're interested in. But yeah, I hope you and your family and friends are staying safe and healthy. Enjoy the simple moments, enjoy the quality time. Don't stop learning new hobbies, like sewing. It's America's favorite pastime, you know? A lot of people say baseball is, but gonna have to disagree with that one.